Coming up, we ate at Wimpy's. Never thought I'd say that we ate at Wimpy's, but we did. From the Bob Varley Studio in Orlando, Florida, this is the Universal Edition of The Diz Unplugged. This is episode 183 of the Diz Unplugged Universal Edition. The Diz Unplugged Universal Edition is brought to you by Dreams Unlimited Travel, experts at helping you plan the perfect universal vacation. Visit them on the web at www.dreamsunlimitedtravel.com for your no-obligation quote. Hey everyone, welcome to this week's episode of the Diz Unplugged Universal Edition. I am your host, Craig Williams. Today I am joined alongside by my co-host, you know him, you love him, Mr. Rhino Clavin. Well, hello. Hey, well, thank you for joining me here today. Mm. So, uh, we've got a really big show for you. Really Really big show. Yes, really really good one. Uh, Yeah, as I uh, teased right up at the front, we have a dining review for you. I haven't had one in... A uh, while. I don't remember when the last time it was. It probably hasn't been nearly as long. It was Burger Digs, and it wasn't that long ago. So <laughs> there we go. It was only a couple weeks back. Uh, so yeah, we're really knocking it out with those quick service dining reviews for you here. But this one was just super, super important. Uh, you know, you know, from hearing us talk about uh, restaurants and and Universal and all that, that there there's at least there's at least two that were on my list. That were important. I know one for Rhino. We know which one that is. Green eggs and ham. Yeah, green eggs and ham. It's uh, been closed for... That's not where we went. No, no, no. And green eggs and ham has been closed for so, so long. And the only time it's reopened in recent days was during the last uh, Orlando Informer meetup party. They they actually got it to open up. So uh, that's quite the accomplishment. But uh, also... We met Mark from that last night. Yep, yep, Mark. Finally, we met Mark from yeah. Orlando Informer. So, ha- hey. had back and forth interaction with him for for a little bit of time now. Yeah, nice guy. Finally, yeah, fin- finally met him. Nice guy. So, uh, if you're watching this, Mark, hey, what up? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's that's us enthusiasm. <laughs> uh, but no, so uh, the other one that we've talked about very often i feel like when we talk about restaurants that aren't open up regularly the other one is in fact wimpy's and i still can't figure this out i don't know if this was what's the whole theory that when you think you made something up like the shazam and shaquille o'neal what's that i'll call oh, it yeah i don't remember i it's got a it's name though right now effect? No. Mm, let me Google it while no. we talk about it. Okay, but I feel like I had that with Wimpy's. The I was, Berenstein Bears effect? I, yeah. Yes, mm-hmm. that one too. And uh, I, I just thought that I had eaten at Wimpy's at some point for the longest time. And then once I started thinking about it a little bit more, then I'm like... It is called the Mandela effect. Good oh, for you. Thank you. Thank you. I pulled that one out of my matukas. But then I couldn't... I, I started second-guessing myself. Did I eat at Wimpy's or am I just convinced because I saw it open at one point in time? And so I'm still not positive if I ever ate at Wimpy's before, but uh, before this experience. But now I can wholeheartedly say that we have eaten at Wimpy's. And I think our review is going to be very, very interesting to anyone out there who has who has been following this, the the progression of Wimpy's as a whole. But. Before we get there, uh, you know, last week we had our big episode on Universal Orlando's cinematic celebration. And, of course, I I went in talking about that show with my knowledge of seeing the technical rehearsal. Rhino watched the the video of it. But actually, from the we are recording this on Tuesday of the week of this release. So we are one day past the official debut, the grand opening of Universal Orlando's cinematic celebration. So last night, to give you the context on this, we actually went to our media event for it. And Rhino has now witnessed the show mm-hmm. with his own very eyes. He's seen 
how the tiered viewing areas work. He's, he's watched the dancing fountains, experienced the pyrotechnics, saw the, the properties used in it. Rhino, I just have to pick your brain on this for one second before we talk about Wimpy's. What did you think of the show now seeing it in oh, person? Oh, I loved it. I thought it was way better in person than the video, but the video is good. I'm not saying the video is not good, but it was... It, we even had a, a smidge of a technical difficulty with that speaker going out, so um, that did affect it a little bit. But even then, I was just like, when it was going full steam, I was like, wow, this is really cool. Like, I lo- like all the sound. It went out right before the T-Rex roared, which was the big, yeah. like, which was why I was disappointed a little bit. But, um, but they're just, like, the water effects are great. And then I just, I love the highlights in the movie and watching it this way, it didn't, it actually did feel like it flowed together a little bit better. Like they were taking cues from each other and how to go. And I don't know. I was very impressed. Oh yeah. No. And, uh, Rhino, what he was referring to, obviously you could tell a speaker went out, uh, in our viewing area that we were in, which was basically the ideal prime viewing area that you want to see this show in. Uh, one of our, our closest speakers to us went out and, it was instantly noticeable because the sound decreased yeah. by a lot. Um, it, and we, we do have a full video of uh, the, the night of the debut on our YouTube channel. And so it's right now, at least I, I can speak firsthand. We have our panoramic wide shot of it working on a, a close up version too, where we, we cut back and forth between the two because Rhino got some great shots of the center screen and all the action on that. So hopefully it's live by the time this goes live, but I'm not making any promises. I have a busy week ahead of me, a lot of other things to do. Anyways, uh, it's it's a, it was a little bit noticeable, or it was very noticeable during uh, our, our time there, not as noticeable listening back in the video. So not, not super affected by it. But that was the only hiccup, really, that happened besides yeah. hiccup from <laughs> the Train yeah. <Your> Dragon. <laughs> Toothless. Uh, hiccup is the the name. Oh, of the boy, the right? Boy, yeah. Okay, I don't know. I didn't see it, so I'm not sure. I know. I'm gonna watch was, him. I'm gonna watch him. But it, it was a funny joke. For I uh, it was. It was a good one. <laughs> um, I I like I actually really enjoyed like being there and watching in the crowd too because people seem to be rea- be reacting to it really well too like when the trolls came on and yeah. it, you know who doesn't I don't care how many times it's been played but who does not secretly love the Justin Timberlake can't stop the feeling song like it's a wedding song so it's one of those where you're like uh this again but you're tapping your toes and you kind of want to like get into it you know yeah i would say just based on the crowd reaction trolls was a highlight despicable me was obviously a highlight uh and uh, people were actually pretty excited about transformers too even which caught me off guard of course they lost their mind during the the potter section uh you know they they could have gave a little bit more love to et because of how important et is to the show but there was there was some golf applause at least yeah, uh, yeah, I was gonna say. I I hope they never remove that part because I love the when the spaceship goes up and the water shoots up in the middle. And stuff. Oh yeah, no, and they uh, since I saw it and the first time I I recorded all that, they fine tweaked some stuff. They got the timing down a little bit better with the pyrotechnics, changed some of the mount. Uh, they got the laser effects working as well too, <laughs> which which did alter a couple of the scenes. I thought the coolest part, the lasers were awesome. Um, but also the, um, when they're doing can't stop, you know, uh, the part in can't stop the feeling when he just dance, dance, yeah. dance. And it keeps, he keeps saying that they kept shooting the fireworks off to that beat. Yeah. And I was like, wow, this is really, really good. Yeah. They, they got the rhythm down yeah. perfectly from, from a technical rehearsal standpoint to now. And so that was just really awesome to see. Uh, I thought, all of the effects were on point. Uh, some of, especially during the Fast and Furious section, and then specifically Kung Fu Panda. Mm-hmm. There was they basically. I don't know if we explained it well last week, but the show is comprised of one main giant water screen in the middle, and then there's two more smaller water screens on each side, making a big panoramic mm-hmm. screen for you and then also on top of that too they have layered water screens so then there are at least two 
that are closer to the viewing area. So at times, there's at least one point in the show I know where there's one like close to the right of you, but then it's interacting with a screen that's further back to the left. It was so cool. Be- it, it creates yeah. a different dimension. But when- with the Kung Fu Panda and Fast and Furious sections in particular, they were using the panoramic effects so, so amazingly by having stuff go all the way from one screen to the When the Poe's other like side. throwing the fire and stuff like yeah, that, I thought yeah. that was cool. Yeah. I also really enjoyed when Optimus Prime was fighting uh, Megatron because yeah. he shoots off the, the uh, like, cannon or whatever you want to call it and the thing goes and it was just this really cool like it kind of like it was coming out toward you but then went around to the other side of the lagoon and i was like oh but it you it it makes it like if you were watching on your tv screen obviously that's one thing but it was almost like the water was the panning camera and I, i i just thought it was great how it snaked across it really made it feel like you know he was over there and then the other one was over there so yeah absolutely so uh we we just had a really great time watching it. So besides the one little blip with the sound, otherwise it was it was a flawless first performance for the show for the the official show that yeah. it is now. And I I cannot recommend it enough. It's yeah. Rhino made a bold statement about it last night. I don't know if it still stands for him. I think it could be like my favorite Orlando nighttime show. I'm I don't want to like speak to I got to see it a little more because I think Happily Ever After is pretty great too because I like the projections on the castle with the fireworks. But then this is like this is like East Coast. I don't want to compare it to World of Color too much, but. This, for me, it it had that same kind of feeling when I was watching World of Color the first time. I remember, like, the pirate ship. I would say this uses the water screens in a more um, innovative way. I would say I love World of Color. Mm -hmm. I, like, I think it's a fantastic show. Just absolutely spectacular. I also think at 26 minutes, it's just way too long. Yeah. So I do enjoy that they... They reeled back on the time for this show because they could easily add in more properties yeah. if they wanted to. They could have made this a longer show, but they didn't. It I left felt me like wanting the more in the with the right amount of wanting more. Not yeah. like, oh, I want more, like I want 10 more minutes. It was like, oh, that was a lot of fun. I want to see it again more, yeah. you know. I, I agree with that. I, I would wholeheartedly say that. So we highly recommend getting out there to see Universal Orlando's Cinematic Spectacular. And, gosh, not you're not going to see Cinematic Spectacular, Cinematic Celebration. Wish they would have changed the name just a little bit yeah. more from the last one. Because uh, I'm going to be saying sp- Cinematic Spectacular probably for the next y- 10 years. Then I'll finally get to Cinematic Celebration when it's replaced with a new show. But... That doesn't matter anymore. Next thing we have to talk about, finally, is our food review of Wimpy's. So uh, we actually have a short, short video to play alongside this that we did shoot inside Universal um, just because we wanted to uh, give you the full effect of uh, us being there ordering eating it for the very first time so we'll play this video and then when we come back we will talk about the thorough experience we've made it here to Universal Orlando and we are at our dining establishment of choice today the almost always closed Wimpy's Wimpy's here in Toon Lagoon right beside Right beside good old Popeye and Bluto's Bilge Rat Barges. So we uh, already took a look at the menu. Not going to have any spoilers for what we're about to, but I know we've made a decision. I'm very excited. Yeah. Uh, I Like I said in previous times discussing Wimpy's, I'm not sure if I ever ate here, and if I did, it was only once. I have definitely never eaten here. So I think I did come here once, just like on a whim, but it wasn't memorable. So now that it's back opened up for at least the summer, very excited to try it out. So seating looks like it's going to be a little tough here. Not going to lie, but uh, it is hot too. Luckily, one of the team members that works there is passing out free waters all around. Yeah, that was nice. It was a very nice touch, but... We're going to go order our food, hopefully find some shade, and see if Wimpy's is worth all of the excitement. We have our food choices here. 
and uh, there was a very, very limited menu for Wimpy's. Uh, I'm talking one, two, three, four actual like combo items on the menu, and then uh, two two things under the salad category. So just to talk about what they did have, um, we're talking a bacon cheeseburger, specialty burger, grilled fish pita, foot long hot dog, caprese salad, and then I believe it was a fruit plate. So those are your options here. Uh, we went with two of the things that sounded interesting to us. Obviously we had to go with the specialty burger. I'll hold that up for you. Of course we're gonna have like cutaways and all that stuff too if you're watching. If you're listening, I apologize. It is a very loud area here around Wimpy's. We have Popeye and Bluto's right under us, as I said before, and then the area music, it's just insane. But the specialty burger is spinach, special sauce, topped with a sunny side egg, and then there's also a piece of cheese served with fries. Uh, and then we also got the fish pita, the grilled fish pita which is blackened cod, lettuce, caramelized onions, pineapple salsa, salsa, sorry, not salsa, and uh, citrus mayo. And the combos that they have here, of course, are the same that they have at all the other quick service. They try to sneak you for more money with the milkshake. We said no, no, no. Um, and we just got the, the french fries with it. But we'll talk about pricing and stuff a little bit later uh, in regards to that, just because, uh, just because I don't have it in front of me. So I'm gonna start though, I believe with the burger, just because I have a feeling I'm going to be disappointed with the burger, but I'm gonna love the fish. So let me go ahead and cut. Oh, I see that egg. Oh, the egg is. I'm gonna, I'm gonna take this side. Yolky? Yeah. It's the egg is very yolky oh, there. Good, good, good. Yeah. So that's that's a good sign. A lot of times with these types of burgers, you worry that egg's gonna sit too long and be a little overcooked. You can see that it is a little bit. It is a little bit tough inside there, but for the most part, nice and runny. But we also have a classic universal frozen hamburger, so we'll see if this can elevate. Okay, it's really delicious. I'm gonna sit with my thoughts for a second. Rhino, I want you to get in on this. I am starving. I have not had an egg on a burger in quite some time. I don't eat red meat that too often, but this is a treat for me today. Mm. Yeah. I have food in my teeth, sorry. No, oh, I can feel it. How disgusting. Um, gross. Not the burger though, the burger's great. I feel like anytime you put an egg on a burger, you can't really go wrong because it's got that like, that yolk with that like kind of um, the beef, like the savory, it just, it does, it all mixes together right, you know? Um, and the, whatever the special sauce is, it's got a little bit like of a tang in there. It almost tastes like um, mayo ketchup. Like, I know that sounds weird, like mix the, mixed together, but you all usually hit it with like a piece of lime or something like that, or, or a lemon. Um, but over, yeah, it's, it's pretty good. It's very liquidy, very drippy. In the best way, though. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, and I do love the inclusion of spinach on the burger because you can't be eating at a Popeye themed restaurant and not have some sort of spinach on the menu. I honestly feel like they should spinach should have been in everything over there, but not everybody likes spinach, so. A lot of people know. were getting their stuff without spinach as we were standing in line. You could hear like specialty burger, no spinach. Spinach is like, other than kale, it's like one of the best greens for you. I, I love spinach, I don't know. They just put it, try it and stuff. It's got, people have an aversion to it, but I need to like get the food out of my teeth before I can continue this conversation. So I'm gonna let you try the fish. The fish first, sorry. So 
Now just like picking this up to cut it, this is hearty. Uh, granted, a lot of the weight is right in the pita, but it's, um, the pita is just fluffy, feels like a cloud. Oh, careful, it, yeah, it's breaking. It is packed in here with toppings, oh my goodness. Yep, in their yep. full mouth. It's falling apart on me. I'm gonna put down some of my sides there for a second. Okay, just like the burger, this is very messy, a little bit runny. My goodness, it's it's flavorful though. It's it's really flavorful. So the the blackened cod just adds a little bit a hint of spice. Not spicy though. So for someone like Rhino or I, we'd probably want a little bit of hot sauce to kick it up to the next notch. But it doesn't necessarily need it at the same time. It's balanced out by the sweetness of the grilled onions on there, as well as the pineapple salsa. And you know what? I might be a regular Katniss Everdeen because I enjoy this pita. <laughs> no, the pita is actually one of the stars of this. It's just... It's light and fresh and very nice. I believe you're, uh, you're now free from mouth... My mouth is clear. ...issues, so I'm gonna let... I'm gonna let you take in, take a bite of this, get in on this action. Okay, this mouth is clear, so I'm gonna take a bite. I will tell you, that pita does feel nice and soft. I love pita. I love like things served in pita. I agree with Craig too. I'm glad that Katniss chose pita. Um, I am hesitant about the salsa. I know people love mango and salsa, uh, pineapple and stuff on fish. I'm not a huge fan of that stuff. That's just me though. is messy. I and mean, it's probably because we sat for a second to take pictures, but the liquid's really eaten through the, the pita here. I will tell you, the fish is very tasty. It does have that little bit of spice that Craig's talking about, but like, you gotta get that spice whenever you have blackened, blackened anything. Um, and honestly, the pineapple is like not offensive. It's not overly, I'm always worried that like mango or pineapple or fruit, that stuff, it, it's got very strong flavors and I feel like sometimes it overtakes the flavor that I want from the food. That is not the case here. It's actually pretty, pretty good, pretty spot on. So I, I'm like cradling this, so I'm gonna try and eat some more of this and then we'll give you maybe some more thoughts. I bet you're wondering what we thought about Wimpy's, everything else with it. Uh, our final thoughts on the food, as well as what we thought about the seating area, our whole experience of actually getting the food. We're not gonna tell you. Yeah, we're not <laughs> telling you right now. Of course, we're gonna tell you back in the studio. It's rare that we, uh, we actually are recording the episode after we do the in-part portion. Uh, it's usually opposite. So we're going to save some of that discussion for in there. And hey, actually, a, a couple days are going to go by uh, yeah, where I we like, have I time like to let idea. it sit with yeah. us, too. So, uh, yeah, Wimpies, we did it. Now, let's go back to the studio and talk about it. Back to you. Okay, Rhino. So let's talk Wimpies now that we saw that. First off, can you want do you want to say to people where Wimpy's is exactly? Um, well, it's in the Two Lagoon area, and it's by uh, yeah, as you take the turn if you were going toward um, uh, King Kong. It's the oh. other way. Yeah, yeah. You that you is know true. you because you're raking around and you got to like turn right. So there's yeah. a big Popeye statue right there, and when you get to the statue, it's to your right over there, like where the build tra- yeah, build is. rat barges. Bil- is. I was staring at that sign and I was like, "What is a bilge rat? Yes. A bilge rat? Bilge rat? Bilge rat? I bilge believe rat. it's like an old sailor term. Yeah. So and it's also right back there by Me Ship Olive, Me Ship the Olive, so the kids' playground area. Yeah. 
It's over there. It's like tucked in a little, like, you gotta, when you're coming up, you kind of snake around like a hook yeah. to get back to it. Tucked yeah, away. Absolutely. So uh, let's just go over our whole experience, starting at the very beginning with uh, walking up to it. Uh, the ordering process was downright awful. Uh, I have oh. nothing good to say about it. It took forever. Yeah. There were three, count them, three ordering windows that all said order here. And all three of them were open as if you could order there. Uh, but there was no line management happening. So basically, one side, everyone was lined up for the order here window. And it was a long line, but things were moving smoothly. And then on the other side, there was uh, no one in the order here window. Instead, everyone was just piled up in the exit and then randomly walking up to the window. And so what should have what felt like it should have only been a, a process of maybe five minutes max to, to actually get up to order our food ended up being, I would say, closer to 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. So I... I know I we at least made it past the ten minute mark that we were standing there waiting to order. Yeah, but I'm pretty sure it got to fifteen. Yeah, it, there was just moments where it was like it's not moving at all, and you're like, come on, come on. Yeah, and uh, it's nobody knew it, how to read a menu that day. Yeah, and that's uh, it, this is also, and I won't blame that on the people necessarily. I will say that uh, it's summertime at Universal Orlando, and uh, during this point of the year, it is like Disney and everywhere else in Central Florida. It is heavily based uh, tourism around uh, tour groups from different areas of the world that do have a a language barrier. Could not think of the words there. And that does have a pretty big impact, especially when ordering at restaurants. So, and Wimpy's doesn't necessarily have a straightforward menu, which I guess we can get to that right now. The Well, I will say this too. It is in that area near the bilge rat. So be warned, there's a lot of soaking wet people around you. Yeah. So, you know, when that line's getting closer and those wet bodies are getting near you. Bleh. Yeah. And I, I brought disinfectant wipes oh and was, we'll, we'll get to that yeah. but yeah the the menu uh is made up of basically four different combos uh i know we talked about it a little bit in the video but just to recap the bacon cheeseburger specialty burger grilled fish pita and the footlong hot dog and i think because of that a lot of guests were going up there and they just wanted like a regular cheeseburger or they wanted a regular hamburger so there was a lot of time you, you for a hamburger tuesday wait how does it go <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, that's what Wimpy says. I, I, he said, I, I would gladly pay you Tuesday for a hamburger today. I, I'm sure that's exactly what he said. <laughs> I don't know the quote verbatim, so I'm not going to go down that road. Uh, but yeah, there was a lot of issues back and forth with guests in line trying to alter it with having that language barrier. So that did have an impact on your average day. I don't know if that's going to be an issue, but... Uh, it's only one way to find out, and that's to go back at some point. And uh, I will say that, as, as you saw in the video, we really enjoyed it. But mm. there was a couple things to note uh, with the food. Uh, again, I, and um, burgers were coming out very quick. With the fish pita, this was actually mm. a process. Um, they don't have the fish sitting there waiting Which for you. Which is good, you. yeah. Yeah, it's, it's freshly made. It's freshly blackened for you. But because of that, uh, expect at least uh, is it a, five minutes at least. Extra. They said five minutes. It, like it, was was, it was longer than five minutes, though. Um, but yeah, it's if you do order the fish pita, you're going to be waiting a little bit longer. One of the things I wanted to see is would the burger... Would we get one that was just sitting out on the counter waiting mm -hmm. and then like for our order and then as soon as the fish was up, would they pair it together and then send it out to us? And I'm happy to say that they absolutely didn't until the fish pita got to the window because I was kind of watching. Until it got to the window, they didn't put our burger out either. Okay. So they kept the order together to make sure everything was fresh and that was, that was a big deal. But uh, yeah, the next hurdle we ran into was seating. And the fact that there was barely any. Well, and that's the hard part, too, is that Wimpy's, they they didn't, like, 
they weren't serving. All those people weren't eating. Some of them maybe were eating. It was packed lunch or others were just sitting and waiting for something. And it's so, you know, there is no, there needs to be like a team member policing the area yep. maybe, or just like having at least one of the seating sections reserved specifically for Wimpy's when it's open. You yeah. Know? There's, there was two seating areas. There's one directly to the right of the building and that's made up of, I, without having the picture in front of my head right now to count, I'd say like I 10 would tables say, maybe. Oh, I would say even less than that. I would say seven. Um, but yeah, I, I, you could be right. I could be wrong. No, I think 10 too high. It's, it's between, we will say it's between seven and 10 tables up there. And for the most part, when we were up there eating, I think there was all but, all but one other table besides ours was taken. And by the time we left, they were all taken and maybe two or three of the tables didn't have any food at all. They were just looking for a place to sit down. And there was more than seven to 10 groups always in that line getting food. There is one more seating area to the left of Wimpy's, but this, uh, this again, maybe had seven to 10 tables, yeah. but this side was even worse than our side in that there was maybe only two groups actually eating at the tables and the rest were all soaked after coming off of Popeye's and then they, they were waiting for like the dryer unit or they were just sitting there drying off and checking everything that they had. So even the tables that, that were like not we, being used We met used a girl over eating. there too, before I forget, because she had the poncho on and yeah. she didn't have the stuff with her. Uh, Brianna. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Because I was like, that's my sister's name. Yeah. So, uh, hey, Brianna. Yeah. <laughs> very nice to meet you. <laughs> yes. It was very, very nice to meet you. But yeah, so the tables were just, seating was a nightmare. We got lucky. We found a table pretty quickly because we poached it as soon as someone yeah there was basically we a girl her. there who wasn't eating she was just sitting at the table we by herself stared at her yeah and <laughs> when we did she immediately got up so i don't know if it was because we looked weird or that she realized i'm one girl sitting here at a table and taking it away from people who actually have food and need a place to eat uh, regardless, we ended up getting one quick, but it was disgusting and dirty. So yeah. luckily, Rhino had wipes to just cover the table. Mm -hmm. And so that's your lesson for the day. Always make sure you have... Always leave a note. Yeah. Well, don't oh. do that. Always no. <laughs> have antibacterial wipes on you. Don't think that there's going to be a team member around. And this goes at Disney, too. Don't think there's going to be a cast member or team member around to clean your yeah. table immediately. Uh, chances are you will struggle to find them, and then your food will be as cold as it is. They're after a dollar fifty a target. Do yourself a favor. Get yeah. some packs. Throw them in your pockets if you don't want to bring a bag. Yeah. So definitely, definitely bring wipes. Wipe down your table. Uh, the food. I think as as I left there, I was leaning towards liking the grilled uh, the grilled fish pita a little bit more than the burger. Uh, mostly for the, the healthy aspect of it. If you don't remember, the grilled fish pita was blackened cod, lettuce, caramelized onions, pineapple salsa, citrus mayo. It was seventeen forty nine for the combo that came with the fries and regular yeah, milkshake. Like, what the heck? And of course, we told you uh, in the video and repeat it, don't ever go for the combo unless you really want a crappy milkshake. Just ask for the the sandwich and fries by itself it's fifteen forty nine for both that and the specialty burger at least and uh i thought i enjoyed that more but then as the day went on and i got home and i was talking to kylie uh i was like oh the specialty burger it had spinach it had this it had this big mac sauce on it, it had the egg that was actually mm -hmm. it was it was cooked right it was cooked yeah. right yeah it wasn't too runny but it also wasn't overly solid it was in the burger even though it was a frozen frozen theme park burger, they still somehow managed to cook it medium without it being cold on the inside. It was like, it was just really well cooked. Yeah. And uh, it was messy, but... I actually, uh, the more I thought about it, the more I think I enjoyed the burger, specifically because sometimes when you go to places that do put the eggs on the burger, which is pretty, I feel like, yeah. semi-common at this point, um, you know, it'll be at like a... Um, like a craft burger place or something yeah. like that. And usually like the patty on the burger is a lot thicker. And I actually thought like the thin egg on the thin, thinner burger 
was kind of a nice like it, it was the right amount for yep. me at that moment you know i didn't want this like i didn't want a ton of the meat i just i wanted like all those ingredients together yep. i would have if i could have changed one thing about it i would have just added a lot more spinach to i it agree because yeah. i i love spinach me so too. but at 18.99 for the crappy combo or 15.49 for the burger uh I think we could say wholeheartedly, both you and I agree that this was well worth it yeah. for that price. So um, the food it, it did not change my mind later. Like I walking away from it, I was going to be like, we'll see if I really enjoyed this. Maybe we were too hungry because sometimes we do have that aspect. But I'm still thinking about the food. It wasn't from there. it wasn't the. I didn't end up not liking the food the problem was i hadn't eaten anything at all during that day and i think i ate my food too quickly and then also it was a billion degrees outside on top of being like really humid that what day of the week did we go do that that was on a thursday uh we had a softball game later yeah. that night too and i remember thinking like it 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 wasn't that it made me sick or anything like that. It was just kind of like it sat with me for a little bit. But that was that was my own mistake that I made. And I still, like, would I go get that food again? Absolutely. I completely agree with that, too. Absolutely. It is on my list to, to go back. And uh, I, I think if I had to choose between one of the two, uh, even though I just raved about the burger, and I think that is the go-to choice, the one I would want to see is the fish pita again. I want to know how the quality of that holds up. Yeah. If they can if they can produce that consistently. The burger, I have no doubt that they can produce that consistently. I understand sometimes that that thin patty is going to be overcooked. Uh, but well, overall, the well, that flavors, the they can't really screw that up. We, the patty was actually cooked medium. And yeah. that was when I was like, wow, this is surprisingly like not like a pocky puck. <laughs> like, yeah. So. It, it was a shock. So uh, I, based on that, we highly recommend going to, to Wimpy's right now, especially. Yeah, in, why not? It's different. You yeah. Know? I, I mean, I know we still have a couple places left to go in Islands for quick service, but I right now it's it's up there in it's, terms of the food. I, I It's definitely if you're like in that Toon Lagoon area and going to go, do not go to uh, Dag. uh what, what the heck is blondies. it called? A blondies yeah. and get the Dagmire, right? Is the, that what's called? The Dagwood. The Dagwood. Somewhere in there, I'll find the words someday. Yeah. I don't know names of things. Yeah. Who it, are you? And in terms of Toon Lagoon, this Wimpy's is so much better than Blondie's as well as the Comic Strip Cafe. I don't uh, think I've ever eaten at the Comic Strip Cafe. You're not missing much. We'll do it yeah. again soon. <laughs> uh, I think it's better than the options in Marvel. I think it's better than the options I've had in in. Um, uh, Seuss Landing, I think it's better than. Uh, I don't know if it's, it's better than Jurassic like Park. It's, it's, it's there. There's a lot of options yeah. in Jurassic Park. I think it was better than Burger Dicks. Yeah, I, I don't know if it's better than Thunder Falls Terrace. Yeah, we, we did kind of enjoy our food well, there so I, the thing about thunder falls terrace is it's like harry potter like the it's got the yeah. chicken with the potatoes and stuff and so i like that that kind of an yeah. option but but so if you're on that jurassic park over side of the park i think it's your yeah. one of your better options and, and if you're looking to try something different unique this summer that you haven't had before definitely wimpy so the rest of those places are going to be around wimpy oh yeah for we real. know it will be open some days during the summer it's it's not guaranteed it's going to be open every single day, but right now, from everything we're hearing, it's it will be around for the summer, and we don't know how much longer after that if it will stay open. Maybe it'll so, flip-flop and we'll get... Green eggs and ham. Green eggs and ham. Jesus, yeah. I'm it, getting tired. I'm going to write an yeah. email. <laughs> no, I, I, I hope that might be the case, too. But, uh, yeah, that's we enjoyed it. If you go there, maybe you'll enjoy it, too. And we can really get the buzz going about how good Wimpy's is and how it needs to stay open and close inferior things like Blondie's. Good, but good, 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 good. That's, that's just me on that. So that's it for our review of Wimpy's. Go out there and get it. Get your Popeye on, all that good stuff. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Um, thank you, Rhino, for sitting here and having this conversation with me. I'm hungry. Okay. <laughs> and thank you, everyone out there who listened and watched this. I really do appreciate it. We do it because of you every week, so we're going to keep doing it even longer. Uh, for links to everything discussed in today's Diz Daily. No, that's what? <laughs> what? <laughs> 
<laughs> what, what did I go are you into? Doing? I was in my head. I was singing the Brady Bunch theme song, and you're over here doing the Dilly Fix. Yeah, I, was I doing don't the keep know on, where that keep came on, from. Keep on moving, and then I heard the links to everything discussed in today's Disney. For links right. to anything discussed in this episode, head over to disunplugged.com, <laughs> home of our show notes page uh, for this show and all the others on the Disunplugged podcast network. It'll include links to our Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and a uh, link to our email, UO Podcast at disunplugged.com. We're getting very close to doing another email show in the future here. So now's the time that I would start sending us emails with questions that you might want us to answer in the future. Uh, if you watch this on YouTube, of course, as always, go ahead and leave comments down below. Uh, you're not leaving enough. I want to see more. Uh, and definitely hit that thumbs up button and make sure you are subscribed if you haven't yet. If you're listening to this on iTunes, uh, we still we love you too. Just as much as we love YouTube. I honestly love you. love you. There you go. And we got your singing in. And uh, so, yeah, if you're listening to this on iTunes, of course, always uh, review us as well as subscribe, uh, rate us, all that good stuff. So thank you again to everyone out there who listened and watched this. We do appreciate it. And we'll be back with you next week for another episode of the Dis Unplugged Universal Edition. But until then, remember, we still haven't changed the name. <laughs>